That had been the boxer's call to arms, a flamboyant strategy for inside the ring. But he carried in his heart and mind a more eloquent design for his sport and beyond. The words of Rudyard Kipling from the poem entitled If, in which he found a philosophy for life and an unending sustenance for a young man's dream to be the best. If you can dream, If you can dream. Everything has a purpose in life, and it's the knowing of that purpose which enables every soul to fulfill it. When I was 12, my purpose was to be the heavyweight champion. I wanted to be a good boxer and a heavyweight, a beautiful, scientific, artistic, creative boxer. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. I really wanted to do it. I worked towards it every day, six days a week for 12 or 13 years. It later led up to winning the Kentucky State Golden Gloves on up to the National Golden Gloves. The fruit of these years of labor would eventually ripen. The opportunity for Olympic gold lay on the horizon. The most popular USA winner was the lighthearted Cassius Marcellus Clay V. Clay was by far the best of the USA boxers. I was standing right on the top with the pretty gold medal. That was my greatest thrill. But the joy was tempered by the segregation in his hometown and in his country which was in the throes of a growing racial tug of war. I say segregation now and segregation forever. We suffer political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. With the struggle for racial equality tugging at his heart, Clay grew more passionate about his personal challenge, his dream to become the heavyweight champion. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fat, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. It was a confidence that Clay shared only with himself. No one else believed he could slay the Goliath of boxing, Sonny Liston. Clay continued to shake up the world by changing his name, releasing in his mind the personal yoke of slavery, and by finding moral and emotional shelter in the controversial nation of Islam. I don't have to be what you want me to be. I'm free to be what I want to be and think what I want to think. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, I'm a Muslim. My religion is Islam. What's wrong with that? You have 600 million Muslims on earth, and Muslim only means one who submits entirely to the will of God, Allah. 
I give you, brothers and sisters, Brother Minister Muhammad Ali. Now that I'm a Muslim, now that he gave me the beautiful name of Muhammad Ali and took away that slave name of Cassius Clay, now I can go all over the world, all over the world. Newly centered and strengthened by his odyssey into the Muslim faith, Ali began to see the world. It was not just a journey of observation, but a pilgrimage toward a new understanding. As always, he was quick to see and to comprehend. A new side of his character would be revealed, the capacity to give of himself to people and their needs. If all men count with you, but none too much. I'm a prophet, I'm the resurrector, I'm the savior of the boxing world. Who would have dreamed when they came to the fight that they would witness the launching of a human satellite? I'm always confident I'm with all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent means, if that's good, I'm there. I want the whole world to know that Louisville, Kentucky produces the greatest of all time. One more time. If you can bear to watch the things you gave your life to broken. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Muhammad Ali has just refused to be inducted into the United States Armed Forces. I will not go 10,000 miles to help murder and kill another poor people simply to continue the domination of white slave masters over the darker people of the earth. At that point, he really became a cause, a symbol, a, a sign of something much larger than himself. But the lords of boxing were unmoved by this new symbolism. With his title stripped and no state willing to issue him a license, his dream became a dream deferred. A conviction for draft evasion, facing five years in jail and heavy fines, he bore the stress of nearly four years of court appeals. If I'm gonna die, I'll die now, right here fighting you. If I'm gonna die, you my enemy. My name is the white people, not Viet Cong, or Chinese, or Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious belief, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. No matter what you think of Mr. Muhammad Ali's religion, you certainly have to admire his courage. On June 28, 1971, the Supreme Court finally ruled in his favor. With his conviction overturned and his license to box reinstated, he went back to the ring and a new dream, to become the heavyweight champion of the world once again. If you can bear to watch the things you gave your life to broken and start again at your beginnings, Mindful of the task at hand, Ali put himself and his dream on the line. He called up the new title holder, Joe Frazier, angling for an opportunity to win back the championship he had never lost in the ring. You wait till I get Joe Frazier. I'm gonna whoop Joe Frazier. I'm gonna show him what a real world champion he is. We just signed the contract and it's all over. It was billed as the fight of the century and the ex-champ turned challenger was in a hurry to make history. Muhammad Ali opening up the bed. In only his third fight after the layoff, Ali's jabs, his shuffle, and his courage grabbed the nation's attention, even after the shock in round 15.
If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. Allah, God, I'm his tool. God got him. Purpose is my people. And I can help with just one fight. Aging contender continued to rumble for his dream, spending three years fighting to get one more shot at the championship. This time, he would challenge a younger and stronger fighter, George Foreman, who lifted Joe Frazier completely off the canvas with a single punch. Age 32, Ali surprised the experts and foremen with his mind, his tenacity, and an earthquake in his fist. force your heart and nerve and send you to serve your turn long after they are gone. With nearly three decades in the ring behind him, Ali continued his humanitarian journey to touch, to understand, and to help in any way he could. Despite the debilitating effects of Parkinson's disease, he remains an ambassador of faith, of social justice, and spiritual growth. Boxing was just to introduce me to the world. And now my life is starting. Fighting injustice, fighting racism, fighting poverty. Using this faith that the world knows for fame and going out and representing truth and helping certain causes. The impact recognizes no continents, no languages, no colors, no oceans. He is so full of love, and he has become the embodiment of love, both the love that he gives to the world and the love that the world gives back to him. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, and walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if all men count with you, but none too much. I like walking behind him to watch people walking up to him. The way he makes people feel, you know, he really lifts people up. Everything that's in it.